everybody, welcome back. In the previous video, I discussed binary acids and how the bond polarity and the bond strength affects the relative acid strength. In this video, I'm going to discuss another family of acids called the oxy acids. And as the name suggests, oxy acids contain a hydrogen atom bonded to an oxygen atom. And then that oxygen atom is bonded to another atom. And so the structure looks something like this, where you have your acidic hydrogen attached directly to an oxygen and then that oxygen's attached to another atom and there could be other atoms attached to that atom as well. <clears throat> Remember for a hydrogen to be acidic it needs to be partial positive because remember acids are proton donors so this is the partial positive. We've learned that oxygen is partial negative and so that dipole arrow is pointing towards that oxygen atom those electrons are being pulled away from that hydrogen which can make it more easily donated as a proton to act as an acid so there are two factors that ex um, that are affecting the strength and polarity we don't have to worry about and I'm talking about the effect of this acid strength itself. We don't have to worry about um, the bond strength in comparison like we did with the binary acids because the bond that's breaking is always an oxygen-hydrogen bond for these oxy acids. But the two factors that you do need to think about when looking at oxy acids and their acid strength is the electronegativity of element Y and also the number of oxygen atoms attached to Y. Because remember oxygen is pretty electronegative. Um, so let's look at the figures here. This figure is showing oxy acids um, where element Y is a halogen, right? And so the only thing that's really changing here, always when we're looking at comparison, we're like, what variable is changing? Well, it's the type of element Y and its electronegativity. So if we looked at the electronegativity value of iodine, bromine, and chlorine, we can see them here. And we notice that if we were to rank these acids in terms of strength relative to one another, now they're all weak acids, by the way, they're, they're not strong acids, but the strongest out of the three is um, the hypochlorous acid here, right? Because it has a more electronegative chlorine um, attached to that oxygen. So you can imagine um, that electronegativity um, can work through what's called the inductive effect. Um, and so even though the chlorine is not directly attached to the hydrogen, it does have a pull. And so it can pull more of those electron density towards itself. And so this is where drawing the dipole arrows may be really useful. And so we just have a really large dipole moment pointing away from the hydrogen and therefore that hydrogen is more partial positive relative to the other extreme here where iodine is element Y Iodine's not as electronegative, so it won't have as strong of a pull of electron density towards itself away from the hydrogen atom. So once again, the more electronegative element Y, the stronger the acid. And I'm, just, I'm talking about relative strength here. It doesn't make it a strong acid per se. So let's write down that trend. The higher the electronegativity 
of element Y, we increase the acid strength. Now the other factor we need to look into are, are the number of oxygen atoms attached to Y. And so in this bottom table here, we have um, the chlorine series. We have perchloric acid, chloric acid, and hypochlorous acid to compare to. And once again, you always try to see what variable's changing. It looks like element Y is all chlorine, so that stays the same, but we see that the number of oxygens change. Just also want to make note that that OH bond is the same, but what's attached to the oxygen is what's going to make a huge impact on the acid strength. Now it turns out that perchloric acid is one of the strong acids. So in this series here, it's definitely going to be the strongest. And it's because this chlorine has three oxygens attached to it, which are also all very electronegative we have a huge dipole moment pointing away from that hydrogen towards that chlorine and all those oxygens. But as you have fewer oxygens attached to that chlorine, the dipole moment will decrease. And therefore, the acidity of that hydrogen atom will also decrease um, because it doesn't have as much electron density being pulled away from itself. So let's write that down in summary. As we increase the oxygens attached to Y, we also increase the acid strength. So these are the two trends we need to consider when we are ranking the relative acid strength of oxy acids. All right, so let's go ahead and work a problem together. So based on the molecular structure, let's arrange the oxy acids in order of increasing acid strength, and then we'll explain our choice. Um, so you can pause the video, try this out on your own to, to see if you understood what we just covered together, and then come back and check your work. So once again, whenever I look at ranking type problems, I always like to see what variables are the same and what is changing. And what I notice is that once again, these are all oxy acids. And they each have three oxygens attached to their element Y. So that's not changing, but element Y is changing. And remember when these acids are written, especially in general chemistry, we tend to write them in more of a condensed form, but remember that hydrogen is not attached to the chlorine, it is attached to one of the oxygens. There's an OH bond in each of these. Um, if you go on to take organic chemistry, you, didn't, you tend to draw the structure in a little bit more expanded um, form so you can see the true atom to atom attachment. But this still qualifies as an oxy acid. The element Y, which are these halogens here, is attached to one of these oxygens. The oxygens that's attached to the hydrogen, okay, like we saw before. So just so you hear, you see the structure here for the, um, the, the chlorous acid here. So we see this structure and the chloric acid. And here we notice that we have the hydrogen, even though it's written in this condensed form here, we have a hydrogen attached to the oxygen. That oxygen is attached to the chlorine, and then the chlorine only has two of the oxygens attached to it. So it would be a similar structure for the HBrO3 as well as the HiO3. So the only thing that we have changing here then is element Y, and we said that if we increase the electronegativity, I'll abbreviate electronegativity as En, of element Y, then we increase the acid strength. <clears throat> 
which one of these halogens is more electronegative? In other words, which one is the closest to fluorine? Fantastic, that would be chlorine. So then this would be our strongest out of the three. It's not a strong acid, but it's strong, the strongest relative to the three that we have listed here. Which one of these elements um, is lowest in electronegativity? Always do the extremes first. Excellent, iodine. And then you can work your way in the middle. So this would be the weakest out of the three. And then this acid would be in the middle in terms of acid strength. All right. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.